Hi Matt fans, today we are looking at how to improve your labelling in QGIS 3 from two great blog posts, one by Tom and one by Niall. So let's get going. I'll place a link to Tom's blog and also to Niall's blog as well so that you can do some further reading on this if you would like to. But for now, let's dive into QGIS and have a look at some awful labels. Here we have a satellite image and you can see there's quite a few different areas of contrast. We've got some very light areas, some fairly dark areas as well. And it's quite common that we need to label these. So what color label should we go for? Well, if I go for a black label, that's quite difficult to read. So the alternative to that, maybe I can go with a white label. And that's easier to read, but the labels do kind of stand out. It draws your attention away from what you're actually looking at in the map. And there are certain areas like here with Cliff House, that's not too readable. They just don't look that great. So one way that we can combat this is to start using halos. And here I've got a gray and white halo. So let's have a look at this one. I've got gray text with a white halo. Now we can definitely read these labels, not a problem at all, but they do stand out an awful lot. And let's just go in and have a look at how we can set halos up. So if I double click on this, I'm in my labeling uh, options. And if I go to buffer, I can just set the halo for my labels and could change the color here. That might give us a bit of a different effect. Let's go with a blue one. And there you can see they're pretty garish labels. Now, one way to get around this, I did change the order. So we have got a white label here with a gray halo. And these are looking pretty good, but I've also done something else here and I've used a blend mode. So you can see here, I've chosen blend mode and I've opted to use the multiply effect. I've also got some draw effects as well, which allow the labels to blur. So I've added a Gaussian blur. Now I'm going to go backwards here and just turn off the draw effects and you can see what happens in the background. So if I switch off draw effects and apply that, you can see that the halo is a little less blurred and a little more obvious. And if I turn off the blend mode completely, and apply that, that's what we're looking at. So you can see the difference and you can see how you can make your labels a lot more appealing. So let's go through that again. If I change my blend mode to multiply and apply that, that's already looking a lot better. And then if I go into draw effects and choose blur and Gaussian blur, Blur strength of 10 and an opacity of 100% and apply that. Even better, it makes our halos even less noticeable. So there are a couple of ways that you can play around with your labels. Now, Niall does suggest one thing um, and that's to use the color picker to choose the color of your halos and that might make them even less obvious but still effective. So let's go in here and pick a color. I'm just gonna choose one of the colors from the background. Let's go for a lightish green. That will do, and let's apply that. And there we go. That kind of sits in, and you can see up here in Bower Hill where we get the full effect because we're on a lighter background, and it's barely noticeable around Birkenbrae. I would suggest that you play around with these. You can change your opacity according to what your background looks like. Bringing that opacity down, we've still got the effect that we need. So up here at Cottages, and if I just bump that up a little bit to 37, apply that. That's a fairly inobtrusive and yet effective way to make our labels look an awful lot better. So do play around with these. Have a look at Niall's post and also Tom's post. There's more information there. But just wanted to give you a quick style tip today. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to like, subscribe and leave a comment below. And happy mapping.